everyone. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control, which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone once again to Angel Healing House Radio. I want to start the show today by sharing one of my favorite things to do in the summertime, which is to read, whether I'm underneath an umbrella, under a big floppy hat, at the beach, by a lake, surrounded by nature, or just sitting on my in, in my office with my doors flung open, enjoying summer breezes. A great thing to do in the summer months is to read. So a great summer reading checklist, as far as I'm concerned, is to find a book that is absolutely engrossing and it engrosses the reader. It makes them feel like they are on an adventure, journeying with the heroine or the hero of the book. Now, the book also helps you travel on the wings of emotions from being faced with challenges to struggling, then to digging deep and finding the strength to overcome, and then ultimately, through faith and trust in yourself, is to triumph. The book also needs to entertain, to inspire, and ultimately, uplift the reader's spirits to remember how extraordinary that they really and truly are. Well, you don't have to look any further because check, check, check on that checklist are my books. My One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, Extraordinary Summer Reading. It takes you on a journey of remembrance, not only with the heroine, but that you've had many other lifetimes and you done just what Angel Ariel does in the book as she lives the physical in the human incarnation and then she travels to her one true home across the veil and what she does there. And then then, when you finish that book, you're on to the sequel, which is I Am an Angelic Walk-In. These two books can be purchased on my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. They can also be purchased on Amazon. And in addition, I Am an Angelic Walk-In is an audio book. And you can download it, purchase it, and download it on, and listen to it on audible.com. In last week's show, everyone, we spoke about how to raise our energetic frequency to be able to connect with angels. And if you missed last week's show, or if you missed any of the shows, they are all archived on my host page on the Transformation Talk radio site. And all of the topics are listed there going back over the last year and a half that I've been on Transformation Talk radio. And today, 
we will be speaking uh, more about the topic, Connecting with Angels, with today's show, which is entitled Angel Signs, Part 1. And it's Part 1 because there's just so much to talk about. Like so many topics on my radio program, this one was also inspired by a client who said to me, you are so fortunate that you have the posse of angels and that they seem to always send you very clear signs. They said, I wish that I could be as lucky as you to have a posse of angels and given angel signs as well. Well, I told this client that Perceiving angel signs has nothing to do with being fortunate or being lucky. If that was the case, all we would need to do was carry around a four-leaf clover, a horseshoe, or a rabbit's foot. But her comment did make me wonder, why do I receive constant messages from the angels as they're always sending me signs, and yet other people say that they hardly receive any? And before I could ponder any more on the subject, the Posse of Angels replied that the first reason that I get so many signs is that for the past 14 years since I incarnated and I walked in to the former soul of Claire Candy to her body is that my number one focus and my number one priority has been on my angelic family and our very dear, cherished connection. When we put a laser beam focus on anything, it expands, it grows exponentially, and it increases in energy. Because of the abundance of energy and love poured into my angelic connection, I have an abundance of messages and constant contact. Now, The second reason that I can clearly and easily discern the angel signs is that I only live in the present moment. As I've said many times before on my program, most people keep replaying and rehashing the past and they are um, with blame or something shouldn't have happened or they see themselves as a victim or that they're worrying and stressing about some imagined future um, and they are not living in the present moment of the now. Angels are God's appointed messengers and they have no other purpose than to guide us, to protect us, love us, and to send us signs. They're emphasizing that everyone, and they do mean everyone, has their own angels, and that angels listen to people's prayers and wishes, and they send everyone signs on how to advance beneficially toward the fulfillment of their wishes and their dreams and their desires. But you know, everyone, most people are so busy pushing their own agenda on the how and the when God and the angels have to answer their prayers that they truly miss out on the angel signs on how and when God wishes for us to advance forward for the greatest soul, uh, the greatest growth of our soul. Because after all, that's what we're here for. We're here to be uh, challenged. We're here to expand, to experience life and for our soul to grow. And you know, sometimes the signs that the angels give us are very, very subtle at first. Now they do this in order to see if we are listening to our intuitions and whether we will pick up their subtle clues. You know, if we do not pick up the sign the first time around, well, they will give us the sign in more and more blatantly obvious ways until the penny drops (laughs) and we finally get it. Angel signs can come to us at anywhere, anywhere, and any time. A client <laughs> once told me that she longed for many, many years to meet a man and have a cherished, loving relationship. But as yet, she still was single. 
on a plane trip home to visit her family, she picked up the magazine in the seat pocket and she flicked through the pages and came across an advertisement for a dating site, a dating company called It's Just Lunch. Well, the more she read about it, the more she received goosebumps and shivers and felt that this was a sign. Fish finishing with that magazine, she opened up the magazine that she'd bought in the terminal and there on the page in front of her was another ad for this dating site. It's just lunch. She then read the terms and the conditions and the price of the membership and she wasn't so sure whether to join it or not. Soon after arriving home, she called me and asked me my impression whether she should join this dating site or not. Well, I told her that she had indeed been sent an angel sign, but I didn't feel like she, should, she needed to join. It was telling her that she had been spending an inordinate amount of time inside her house and had not allowed herself to engage with the outside world. I shared with her by the, that taking herself out <laughs> and showing God and the angels that she was doing her part to be seen in public, just having lunch. The angels would have more of a scope. They'd have more possibilities to organize a connection with a prospective relationship. Well, sometimes later, she did take my suggestion and she and her dog went down to her favorite outdoor cafe that they had not been to in a very, very long time. While standing in line, waiting to be seated, she struck up a conversation with a gentleman who also was there with his dog. Um, and last I heard, they were dating. Sometimes the sign of it's just lunch means exactly that. You just need to go out, engage with life and have lunch in order for life to be able to engage with your wishes. So with the topic being angel signs, the posse of angels would like to pull back the veil and reveal some of the ways, some, some of these ways are subtle and sneaky and some are blatantly obvious that the angels try to convey messages to help us in life. Now, first of all, the Posse of Angels wants to remind all of us how truly difficult it is for, for angels to communicate verbally to many people. This is because most people's energetic frequencies are not in alignment with the high dimensional energies that the angels exist in and the angels are, and the energies are too disparate to connect. Those people who are clairaudient have attuned themselves to the angels' high vibrational frequency. And in this way, well, to use an analogy, it's kind of like a dog being able to hear high pitched sounds like our human, um, that our human ears cannot hear. With the enormous popularity of film, television, and the internet, humans have developed to receive most of their information visually by seeing images. Now, the angels send us many visual clues, and many come in the form of different things that come across our, our radar screen, or if you would, that come into our reality to bring us answers to our prayers, intentions and answers to our, our questions. For instance, take butterflies. Butterflies signify, signify, <laughs> that's cute. They signify transformation and they often herald a time when a situation or an event will be transformed in your life. Butterflies so often herald a message from our loved ones in spirit who have made their own transformation from the physical back to their home in spirit. When I see an eagle, uh, the eagle to me is the symbol of freedom and bravery. It could be a message to surrender and be courageous and let go of restrictions in your life. 
In fact, the posse of angels is reminding us that most birds are messengers that rem remind us to allow our spirits to soar free. When we see animals such as a deer, it's a reminder to be gentle, to be kind, of, and to allow our spirits to flow with life. Um, could be a reminder to stop pushing and stop controlling the river of life, trying to force things to go in the opposite direction as to how life wishes to flow for us. Have faith, have faith that if we are getting a sign to go in a particular direction, sometimes logic and rational thinking needs to go out the window because on the other side of that are puzzle pieces that we need and information that is pertinent, pertinent to us to move forward. Then there are some images that repel a lot of people. Take, for instance, spiders. <laughs> but you know what? Spider is a wonderful animal totem. It's reminding us to weave our dreams into reality by passionately creating. Spider could be telling us that we've forgotten our creativity and to honor it and think about where we could be more creative in our lives. After all, something can't get caught in your web if you haven't created the web in the first place. Each animal and each insect that comes into your reality has a very spe special message for you, and it's not there randomly, and it's certainly not there by happen chance. Another sign, beautiful sign, is when we see rainbows which are indications of clearing and cleansing that brings in the fresh and the new. Perhaps it's a sign that a new beginning is coming. Things as, like I said before, horseshoes are a sign of good luck. Airplanes may mean that you'll be traveling or that someone will visit. Possibly it's a sign that you'll be moving forward. You know, the most important part of any image is how it relates to you and what you are going through in the present moment. As well as images, the angels send us signs through the sounds that we hear. One of my favorite stories was of a client who was quite distraught having just had her mother cross over and she was extremely sad because she did not have a good relationship with her mother. They were not particularly close when her mother passed. I said that she could easily connect with her mother now as her mother was now across the veil and had dropped all her attachments to her ego. I told this client to ask the angels to send her signs, um, to send her signs that showed that her mother was in fact still very much alive and still around her. The next session, my client came in and she was so excited to tell me that she happily um, told me that she turned on the oldie station that she listened to and she kept hearing Dean Martin songs, who was her mother's favorite singer. In addition, she noticed that when she walked into stores, it was absolutely uncanny how many times she heard Dean Martin singing. So pay particularly attention to what songs that appear in your reality because they don't appear by happen chance. See if you can discern what message it holds for you. I always do this in my, in my car. First thing I turn on the radio, what is the message in that song? In addition to messages in images and music, one of our strongest sense is our sense of smell. Sometimes all we need to do is smell a particular smell and immediately we get a flashback of a former time, an event or person. You know, everyone, although my beautiful grandmother Sarah crossed over when I was little, I was, uh, well, the former soul was eight years of age, I speak to my grandmother regularly. 
when she comes to visit. And I know it's her because I smell her favorite perfume, which is lilac. And while lilacs connect me to my grandmother, there are others that have their own messages. <laughs> when I smell cigar and cigarette smoke, I know that this is a sign of my ex-father-in-law or the, or the former soul that was in the body of Claire Candy. Uh, it was her ex-father-in-law as he was a very heavy smoker. And that is his indicator that it is he that has come to visit. There are, in, there are different, the different smells often denote different things. The smell of roses often denotes love. The smell of lavender, it reminds us to be calm, serene, and tranquil. The smell of strawberries often does denote new beginnings. Um, and, uh, and like chocolate, it's often served at celebrations, at weddings, um, births of babies, you know, things like that, where we, we celebrate. So we might have chocolate and we might plonk that strawberry into our champagne and raise our glasses. Another way that angels send us messages is through numbers. Now, let's go through one through nine as an introduction for some uh, as to what these numbers mean. Or it could be a refresher to those people who already know about numbers. Seeing a number one often means that the angels are conveying that there will be a start of a positive new beginning in your life around someone or something. Number ones can also mean leadership, independence, or being praised for one's singular efforts in a job. Now, Num now, the numbers do lead on. Number two indicates taking that new beginning and then bringing in a pair, a partnership, a union that could further this new beginning. This could be a message that we'll, we'll get together with maybe a romantic partner that will going to partner with somebody in business or an opportunity. There might be a coupling with friends or marriage. Twos can also bring messages of compromise so that things flow to bring about a resolution or two can indicate having to make a choice between two things. There are agreements made with others and communication in all types is the number two. Now, Leading on from the number two is the number three. Three is the number of fertility and joy and growth. And it's also the number of creativity. You take those two people in the number two and then what they create is the number three. Three is also the number of our projects working out, things coming full circle, or bearing fruit. They often say that three is the number of magic because to it two or more are gathered in that higher source's name, miracles happen. You know, the then leading on from that is the four. The four message is security, stability, secu uh, and uh, a strong foundation. The message from an abundance of fours in one's life may signify that you're ready to put down roots, that you're ready to have more of a sense of security. Number five is the number of change. Some people say it's a challenging number, but if we're being challenged, it's a great indicator that we're ready for change in order for us to grow. Number five deals with motion and can be a time of great change, or it can simply be maybe to change your routine, change things in your life in order for you to move forward. And once we've experienced those changes and challenges, and the number five, number six comes in, and the number six is more balance, more harmony, and it's about sharing. Its message could be to be more balanced in life and to seek more diplomacy and harmony. Number seven is the card that we have to dig deeper into our and find a higher meaning for something. Um, it's all, it, number sevens have to deal with our imagination. 
could be telling you to daydream more and visualize more as to what you want to come into your reality. And number sevens has much to do with the unknown. So uh, within, it's the number of creating from the unknowable. Now, number eight brings us messages of abundance and wealth, success in business. And it's um, it, the number eight is a continuation. If we trace it with our figure, finger, if you put it on the side, it's an infinity symbol. Um, and that it means that things are working out in our life and will bring us back material wealth or financial wealth. And number nine, like the gestation of a baby, is the number of completion. It means that you're almost there. You're almost attaining something, a satisfaction, an accomplishment, and it is telling us to keep going. And this brings us to number 10, which is a one and a zero added together. It brings us back to number one. There is so much to speak about with angel signs that I will be presenting angel signs part two next week. And when I went to my cards and I asked for more guidance from my angel, uh, my angel, my, well, my angelic spirit uh, animals, dragonfly whizzed in. And uh, this dragonfly is telling us to, and it's reminding us to take inspired action to the changes that we desire to make with its quick movements and always shifting and changing direction, seeming like its colors are changing. He's asking us to see through the illusions which are always created by our perceptions and our attitudes. You know, things change when we see things differently. When we change our perception, when we stay calm and centered and connected to our divine eternal nature, a seeming tragedy just might be an unexpected blessing and a crisis may just afford us a wonderful, wonderful opportunity in our lives. So thank you, Dragonfly, for telling us to change our perception and our perspective and we change our reality. So there he goes, zzz, whizzing out. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. When we come back, we will be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings. If you would like to call in to get a message uh, or to discuss the topic, uh, please do call in on 1-800-930-930. 2819 and myself and the posse of angels would love to speak with you so we'll see you right after the break have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife and helps us remember our own journey across the veil and Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. On Angel 
Healing House Radio. Remember that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesdays. And uh, we, we, we have been speaking about the topic Angel Signs. Uh, think about uh, the signs that you receive in your life. Um, think about those times when you've had a question, you've had a query, or you just needed some guidance and direction, and something came across your radar screen, and, uh, and you got the message that maybe this has happened a few times before, and that uh, maybe that the angels are sending you a sign too. Angels send us signs in every given moment. Um, and they have nothing else better to do than to guide us, protect us, and to give us directions. So make sure that you're vigilant and observant. You stay in the present moment and you look for those answers to those wishes, prayers, desires, uh, the fulfillment of your intentions, and how you can take inspired action and step forward. Let's go to our callers. Our first caller is Mandy in Edmonds. Mandy, you're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio. How are you today? I'm fine, Candy. Thank you for taking my call. You're very welcome. How are you doing? Uh, mediocre. I... I think that I should move to a new community. And I guess my question to your posse of angels is where um, the community that I live in and the people surrounding me are just not my tribe. <laughs> They're not my people. They're Mandy girls, tribe and people. And I'm feeling very inspired to find my own tribe. Yeah. The people who resonate with me and vibrate like me. Mm -hmm. And you and I had talked about my unmasking uh, recently, and I've been doing that, and mm -hmm. it just has been so unrewarding, so well, very unrewarding. People are not resonating with me at all. Right. Well, uh, they're saying that your energies and the energies of those around you are so disparate, Mandy. Um, and sometimes things have to get so bad for us that it encourages us to make movement forward. That's how I created my right. Angel Healing House radio program uh, because they absolutely turned off my clients and I would scream at them and they would just say, <laughs> they would say radio, but not radio, which means internet r radio by the time I figured that out. Um, but uh, it was through the establishing, I would never have established that radio, the radio show uh, almost seven years ago if I had uh, was inundated with clients. So there's always a higher reason. And you, th where you are is a coat that has grown too small for your huge energies. These huge, enlightened, bright, shiny energies. It's time for you to find your tribe. Now, um, now that you've come to this decision, the posse of angels are keep nodding their heads. Yes, 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 yes. Go, go, Mandy. And that says, okay, I'm ready to go. Where am I going? Ask your angels to send you signs. So many of my clients, once they stop trying to figure it out and allow God and the angels to show them where to go. For instance, a client of mine was torn between... Um, I think she was thinking between New York and Chicago. Anyway, she went to Starbucks and the, the guy in front of her had the, the logo of the band Chicago on his on on the back of his sweatshirt. You know, she heard she heard the song Chicago, that toddle in town, you know, and then she went to a garage sale and then there was um a record player, an old record player, and it was playing a song that had the lyrics Chicago in them. So, you know, it, are these things happening by happen chance? No, they're not. Nothing happens by happen chance. And she ended up going there and she got a, a wonderful, beautifully aligned job. And she found that she found her tribe. She found those like-minded people to support, to promote, to encourage, to that she could be reciprocal to. And so they're saying, have you seen any signs recently or gotten any nudges as to where to go? Not yet. Okay. The reason you haven't Did gotten... Did I miss something? Go on. Did I miss something? 
no, no. They're saying that you, you didn't miss something. No, they're saying no. They're saying you didn't miss something because you hadn't gotten to the stage yet where you fully committed to saying this is not where I'm supposed to be. It okay. reminds me, it reminds me of the tarot card, and I'll be surprised, not surprised if it comes up, is the Eight of Cups. There are several walking away cards in the tarot. Um, this Eight of Cups is you're walking away from where you are. You have made a decision that this is no longer acceptable, honorable, respectful, whatever you want to call it, doesn't match your energies, but you don't quite know where you're walking to. And that's the best place, right. that's the best place to be because then God and the angels can, can paint on a clear screen. They can paint on an absolutely cleared port, uh, um, canvas. You know, you say, you show me where I can be of best service and you show me where I can help people and people can help me and the energies are completely utterly aligned where I can feel like I feel like I'm living heaven on earth. So let's go to the cards and see what comes out. I'm excited for you now, Mandy, because now you're 100% open. Now you're open. You don't, you don't feel like, well, maybe if I try harder, maybe if I, you know, maybe dumb down my light or maybe I, you know, am not so vocal about my uh, about who I am and and what I spiritually believe in, maybe then I'll get it in 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 with the goods with other people. No, no, you have come to the decision that this is not in alignment with you anymore with your frequencies, and that you are moving on up, moving on out. <laughs> it's like so. Is that the Jeffersons? <laughs> I'm not sure because I've been singing that to myself. <laughs> I don't know. They just they just gave it time to a time to something. <laughs> Nothing can stop me moving on up. <laughs> I think it's a disco. <laughs> Boy, does that date me? Never mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, so the first card that comes out of, out for you is the Five of Swords. Now, the Five of Swords is it is a victory card, but it's a victory card that uh, we often get to this victory or this, um, uh, this sense of knowing uh, through um, a bit of trial and tribulation. Kind of feels like a, a, a hollow victory in a way, but, you know, because you've struggled. You've struggled so much with should I, shouldn't I? I've tried to make this work, but, you know, uh, I've decided now to move on. So it is a weight that's come off your shoulders, but they want you to, they want you to get very, very excited about moving on. Uh, the next card is, I'm not surprised, is the Ten of Pentacles. This is the happy family card. Now, it could be a happy biological family, but this card, more than, uh, more than the family, uh, biological family, is talking about your tribe the happy tribe card you we all know we all and they're how oh, isn't this cute they're saying they're waiting for you mandy they're waiting for you all you need to do is surrender and release where you're going and allow god and the angels to show you signs it'll come in um very clearly now because you've you've told them that you're ready to move on. So your tribe is waiting there to connect with you. And the next card that's coming out for you is, oh, I love this, is the two of um, two of cups, which is the partnering card. And this is the partnering with those like-minded people um, in loving and supportive and kind and just people who are thrilled with your accomplishments, people who are who are just joyful with just who you are and not trying to change you, not trying to judge you. So these are absolutely beautiful cards and a great indicator that you will be moving and just open yourself up to the magic of how they're going to bring you the uh, the new place that you're going. Make sure 
when you when, when you get those signs and you decide, make sure you do call into the show and tell us where you're going. Okay, I will. Isn't that exciting? Well, uh, it's very exciting. It is very exciting. So I hope that's been helpful for you. It has. Thank you. I feel so much relief. <laughs> not lovely. Well, you have an absolutely beautiful day. God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. So many of us uh, are going to be getting signs on the things that we can do to, to move forward. Um, one of the most important thing is to release uh, any expectation and any attachment as to what needs to come in, you know, um, because when we're working with spirit, when we're working with that higher source, God and the angels, logic and rational thinking, justifying does not play any part in where they can direct us to, to live and work and thrive for the greatest good of ourselves and the greatest good of all concerned. So just surrender and see those angel signs as to where you're going to be directed. Let's go to our next caller. We have Beth in California. Beth, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good morning. Good morning. What's happening in your world? Oh, I'm just enjoying the morning and enjoying the the, the sun and just listening to this call and looking for signs. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, um, uh, can you recall any signs that, uh, that maybe happened uh, recently in your life? Yes. Yesterday morning when I got to the gym to work out, I had told my best friend that I don't bend over and pick up money less than a quarter. <laughs> and I um, got out of the car and there were two dimes, a nickel and three pennies sitting right outside my door. So I, I thought, okay, and then I counted it, and it was 28, and that's my number. You know, that's my birth number. Yeah. And I was like, wow. What a wow. nice abundance. Effortless. <laughs> this and I, Effort I thought, that's how easy it is. Yes, effort, effortless abundance. Um, and I've often said that, you know, if we, if we do acknowledge and we do pick up those pennies, those dimes, those nickels, that then the angels uh, say you are you are happy with uh, realizing you know the connection here and we will be sending you more so um, it's uh, you know, a, yeah a lot of a lot of people you know go oh it's just a penny I get really excited I was in a um, uh, parking lot the other day and I got out of the car and there was a shiny penny there and I immediately I just said thank you for my abundance and I open up to receive more in all ways shapes or forms I bought a lottery ticket last week and I was so mm -hmm. excited I won six dollars you know some people would say oh my god six dollars that's nothing but the little child in me got so excited I'm a winner and the universe doesn't know exactly. the difference between I'm a winner for $300 million or for $6. So if I affirm to the yeah. universe, I'm a winner, I found a penny, you know, I'm already ahead of all those people who didn't find the penny, <laughs> you know? So that exactly. connects, it connects me to the highway of, of being a winner. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's interesting. I'm reading, um, just as an aside here, I'm reading um, Marilyn Monroe's uh, biography, uh, autobiography. She wrote it and she said um, that, uh, you know, she was looking um, down Sunset Boulevard and uh, in Hollywood and uh, she said, what am I doing here? There are so many other actresses. There are so many other uh, you know, women at this moment that are praying and wanting what I want. Who am I? And then she thought for a minute and then she wrote, she said, but the difference is, is that I, I am a winner regardless of what I have. She was very, very poor, regardless of what I have. And I'm praying harder than anyone else out there. 
And it just gave me goosebumps. It gave me goosebumps as to how we create our reality. And, And if you see that money and you say, I'm a winner, then you are a winner. And the universe then must reflect that back to you. So did you have a question today, Beth? Yeah, I just, um, I'm just curious as to um, what the posse wants to tell me about my health. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking and I'm scanning you. And well, the posse of angels and I, because I am their representative, they're saying, you are so healthy. They're scanning. (laughs) They are saying, you have done they're showing me you've done so much you have done so much you haven't left any stones unturned and they're saying if you would take anybody i don't care how organic they eat what you know how they monitor their thoughts whether they drink alkaline water or you know make sure that they don't ingest uh, consciously ingest chemicals or additives or preservatives there's always going to be something they're saying in each one of us, uh, us in each one of us's bodies um, that may be a weak link, or it may be uh, because we can't be a hundred percent, you know, not even perfect. We can't get a hundred percent score because we're not robots. We're just not. We are made up. Uh, and each of us has a weakness or, or those things inside of us that, you know, uh, may not reach 100%. But that doesn't mean that we're not healthy. And they're looking at you and they're scanning you and they're saying, my goodness, your health is so, so good. So they're saying, um, concentrate and put your emphasis on how healthy you are and saying those areas that may not be 100%, well, I'm doing the best I can and I'm being diligent. Um, And uh, maybe maybe with them not being 100%, um, maybe that is perfection for you. So um, they're saying, above all, don't stress. Don't stress because then you'll be creating more opportunities um, for your immune system to lower and to uh, to not feel good about yourself. The first card that's coming out for you is the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups card, he's, uh, well, actually it's she, she's looking at three cups over here and it's often a card, not of boredom or apathy or are not being grateful for what you have, but it's often a, often a card of just looking here and above her head is the cup that God is wants to give her, but she's not looking up. She's not looking up. Mm. She's not feeling like she's in grace. So when it comes to your mm. health, they want, and they're really mm. focusing on this word, they want you to feel like you're in grace in every moment. Mm. Your health is just the way it needs to be in this moment for your soul's growth. And when you scan overall, they're saying the majority, the majority is really, really, really healthy and you're doing a great job, but put yourself in a state of grace. And then what comes in is the eight of pentacles. Now the eight of pentacles is the, I often call it the being remarkable card. And being remarkable means that you, uh, you put more of your emphasis on, on being a winner. I won. Mm. I won because I got my health back. And I'm in a state of grace knowing that I'm doing the best I can and I'm working with my intuitive nature to make things so for me. And the last card that you have is the, um, is the two of pentacles. And this is the card of balance. They're saying all you need to do is balance uh, that, with that perception or perspective that you have about your health and that this energy actually, this state of grace or 
not this e e acceptance of things are the way they are for a reason is going to help your immune system and is going to improve your health. So I hope those messages have been helpful for you. Oh yeah, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. It actually brought tears to my eyes. It made me realize that I just need to just continue to be confident that everything I'm doing is okay. Absolutely. It's more than okay. It's perfection for you. So have an absolutely glorious day. You too, sweetie. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Stephanie in New York. Stephanie, you're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio. How are you? Hi. Um, well, I'm also going through health, you know, stuff that I'm mm -hmm. worried about. Yeah. But also, for some reason, I've been stressing. So I don't know if they had anything quick to say about that. But I've also been really stressing out about um, just dynamics with my neighbor for some reason. Okay. And, um and dog sitting so she's not only my neighbor but her sister works with my boyfriend and she asked us to dog sit uh like a month or so ago and she said it would be super easy they're really low maintenance and and you know all this stuff she would totally pay us so we did and um she all she gave us for like six days was you know a pretty inexpensive bottle of wine she didn't actually pay us and they were not that low maintenance. They were constantly peeing and pooping all over the apartment and on rugs. And um, she had said they were wee-wee pad train, one of them. And it wasn't the case. So I was not really sure how to handle that, if I should ask her for money or just be like, oh, well, maybe it's good karma. And then she's going away to Vietnam uh, for two weeks this coming Friday. And she wants us to take care of them again or just one of them while they but and they're very close to each okay. other so the idea of separating them i don't know mm -hmm. and i don't know what to do and i don't know if i'm going to have a surgery during this time and okay I don't, all right I your health all right yeah. stephanie okay. stephanie your health is your number one priority it's not that you're going to use this as an excuse but also when you were speaking about the first time you didn't you didn't set the price as to what was uh what you would accept so you use this mm -hmm. as a, you use this as a test case number one um and you have to you know just let that go now you've been presented with it again and uh and if you don't want if you do want to do it that's number one you have to decide that if you do want to do it you set the price you you know say thank you uh they were more uh they were more trouble uh, or they were more uh, hard work or whatever uh, that I needed to do. And uh, for this, I would need X, Y, and Z. Okay, that's number one. If you Then if you truly think that you're going to have surgery during that time, then, I mean, all you need to say is, I do not know whether I'll have surgery at that time, and I can't commit to it. So these are two really good answers that... Um, uh, you know, um, take into account uh, whether you want to do it. And if you don't want to do it because you might have surgery, then just be upfront and honest about it. The first one was a test case in you setting up boundaries and limitations uh, and limits as to how, how you'll allow yourself to be um, used. The first card that's coming out for you is the strength card, the strength to speak up for yourself, the strength to set your boundaries and your limits and to uh, know what you will and you won't accept. Uh, the next is the four of pentacles, which is um, holding either holding on to money too tight, but it, this, um, the money card has to do with how you value yourself, how you value your health. Will you take this on and stress the whole time that you might get a call that you're going to... Uh, um, uh, be called to surgery and the third card with only about two minutes to go of the show uh, is again um, the, is a pentacle card it's the six of pentacles this is the card of giving and receiving but a lot of people uh, uh, give 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 and then they're uh, they're, they're most upset uh, when they're taken advantage of or be, and it's because they have allowed themselves to be taken advantage of. So this is uh, certainly the card of opening yourself to receive 
uh, your um, due, what is uh, the, the right amount for you to value yourself in sitting for these dogs and the extra trouble and all that, and whether you're going to be valuing yourself and just not do it uh, in case that you have surgery. So I hope those two things have been helpful for you, Stephanie. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, but do they think it would work out and it would be fine if I took it on or, and the extra money would be good? Or the extra would money would be good. So th this is a test. This is a test for you. They can't say whether it'll be fine or not because whatever you choose is divine and perfect for you. But I've got to go now. I hope that's been helpful. Okay. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. And and that just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you to all my callers. Thank you to everyone around the world that's listening to me and referring other to the program. Uh, don't forget that Angel Healing House radio program uh, airs every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you are interested in those wonderful, remarkable summer reading books, One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and its sequel, I am an angelic walk-in. Please go to my website, angelhealinghouse.com, or they can be purchased on Amazon. And I'm an angelic walk-in can be purchased and downloaded as an audiobook on audible.com. Remember, everyone, you have the power and the ability to go out and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. Love. And as always, angel blessings. And I look forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.